This is an instructional video only and is not a substitute for personal medical care. Please see your health care provider as necessary. How to use a glucometer. Today, we will talk about what a glucometer or a glucose monitor is. We will go over how to use a glucometer. And finally, we will discuss how to care for your glucometer. So, what is a glucometer? A glucometer or a glucose monitor is a portable medical device designed to be used by people with diabetes. It is used to measure the amount of glucose or sugar in your blood. This device allows you to keep track of your blood sugar levels to make sure you are not too high and not too low. As you can imagine, a glucometer is a very important tool in managing your diabetes. Here are just a few examples of the many brands of glucometers available today. There are many glucometers to choose from with varying sizes and functionality for all kinds of people. Your healthcare provider can help you choose the best glucometer for you. For our demonstration today, we will be using the One Touch Ultra Mini Meter and the Bayer Contour Meter. Though your glucometer may differ slightly from these, the general instructions and tips we will be going through today generally apply to other glucometers as well. So let's take a look at what's included in a standard glucometer kit. A standard kit is generally composed of four integral parts. First, we have the glucometer itself. Second, we have a vial of test strips. Next, we have the lancing device which is used to break the skin to get blood for the tests. And finally, we have the lancets that are made to be used with the lancing device. Other materials that may be included with a glucometer include a bottle of control solution, an alternate site testing cap, and the carrying case. So first, we need to set up our glucometer. Set the time and date according to the directions in your glucometer kit. If your glucometer needs to be coded, follow the procedure outlined in your manual. Here is an example of a glucometer that needs coding, where we will want to match the code on the vial of test strips to the on-screen display. Now that the glucometer is set up, we are ready to begin testing. First, wash your hands with soap and water and dry them off. Next, choose a site from which you will be obtaining your blood sample. The most common testing site is the fingertips. Some glucometers allow for access to blood from other sites including the palms or forearms as shown. Alternate site testing may be something you're considering if you find fingertip testing uncomfortable or if you just want to give your fingertips a break. However. Alternate site testing is not as sensitive to changes and may become a problem if your blood glucose is not stable. So be sure to talk to your healthcare provider before deciding to use alternative sites for testing. Now it's time to prepare the test strip. First, check the expiration date on your vial of test strips. This vial of test strips expires six months after it's opened. Write down the discard date in the area listed on your vial. Next. Take one test strip out of the vial and be sure to note which end has the narrow channel where we will be collecting our sample. Insert the test strip into the glucometer with the narrow channel on the outside. The glucometer may turn on automatically when you do this or it may need to be turned on manually. The blood drop icon on this screen indicates that the glucometer is ready for a sample. Different glucometers may have different indicators so be sure to read your manual. To prepare the lancing device, we first need to get a sterile lancet. Next, we remove the cap on the lancing device and insert the lancet firmly. Twist the protective disc off to expose the lancet tip. Be sure to keep the protective disc for later use. Finally, replace the cap on the lancing device. If you are using an alternative site, use your alternate site testing cap provided with your glucometer. After inserting the lancet, cock the lancing device until it clicks. If the lancet was already inserted firmly, you may not hear a click at this time. Now that our lancing device is ready, it's time to adjust the depth setting that will control how deep the lancet will puncture. This lancing device goes from 1 to 9, with the smaller number having a shallower puncture depth. Your lancing device may differ slightly, but most are very similar. Start at a low to medium setting at first. If you discover that you need a higher setting to get an adequate drop of blood for the glucometer, adjust your lancing device accordingly. 
Now it's time to get your sample. If using a finger, shake your arm to force blood into the hand. You may also squeeze your finger, running your other hand from the base to the tip to draw more blood into the area. Hold the lantern device firmly against the side of the finger you have chosen to test. There are fewer nerves on the edges, and this helps to minimize any discomfort you might feel when activating the lancet. Press the release button to puncture the sight. If you're having problems keeping your hand steady, it may also help to lay your finger on a flat surface for stability. Alternate the sites where the lancet is used so you minimize the buildup of calluses or scar tissue and avoid causing unnecessary soreness at a single site. After you have pressed the release button while holding your finger at a slightly downward angle, gently squeeze and massage your fingertip until a round drop of blood appears. If the blood smears, wipe the area and squeeze another drop of blood or try a new site. If you are having problems getting a drop of blood, it may also help to warm your fingers by rubbing your hands together or running them under warm water before testing. Also be sure to experiment with the depth setting on your lancet device if you haven't already done so. To collect your sample, line up the narrow channel on the test strip in the meter to the edge of the drop of blood and gently touch the channel to the drop. The blood will be automatically taken up into the channel. Wait until the entire channel is full and you hear a beep or see a countdown. Move the test strip away. After a few seconds, your results will be displayed on the screen. Your results will be stored in the meter's memory, but it is also a good idea to keep a written log of your blood glucose readings to show your healthcare provider. You should document the time of day the blood was sampled and whether or not you were fasting or if you had eaten. If you did eat, write down approximately how long after your meal you sampled your blood. Follow the instructions provided by your healthcare provider to determine how often you need to check your blood glucose. This will depend on what type of diabetes you have and if you take oral medications or use insulin. Some people test only a couple times a day, whereas others may test every 2-3 to three hours while they are awake. You should also use your glucometer if you have symptoms you feel are consistent with a blood sugar that is too low, such as dizziness, shakiness, or sweating. If your diabetes is well controlled, when you are fasting, your reading should be less than 130. One to two hours after a meal, your blood glucose should be less than 180. Now that we have our results, it's time to clean up. The American Diabetes Association recommends that lancets be preferably used only once. However, the lancet can be reused safely as long as you don't share the lancet with anyone else, it does not come into contact with anything but your skin, and you are not ill when you use the lancet. In addition, you should not clean the lancet with alcohol between uses as it is coated with a substance to make it slick. Cleaning it between uses will dull the lancet. Change your lancet when you begin to feel discomfort as this is an indication it has become dull. If you will be using a new lancet to remove the used one, take off the cap on the lancet device. Place the lancet protective disc that we removed earlier on a hard flat surface and push the exposed lancet tip down into the disc. You can now remove the lancet and place it in a sharps container. If you don't have a sharps container, you can use an empty laundry detergent bottle or plastic milk container. Write caution, about medical supplies on the outside of the container. The test strip can also be discarded in the same manner. Be sure to follow local regulations in your area. To make sure your glucometer is working well, there are a few things you need to do. To ensure that your meter and test strips are accurate, you should occasionally test with your control solution, which contains a known amount of glucose. You will want to test with your control solution if you get a new meter, if you have just opened a new vial of test strips, if you have dropped or possibly damaged your glucometer, or if you have repeated unexpected results. Testing using your control solution follows the same procedure as a normal test, except you will now be using your control solution instead of blood. To use your control solution, insert your test strip. You will want to mark this test as a control solution test before beginning. Follow the instructions in your manual. Shake your control solution bottle, remove the cap, and squeeze out and discard the first drop. Wipe the tip with a clean tissue. Holding the bottle upside down, carefully squeeze out a hanging drop. Hold the drop to the top edge of your test strip as before until the narrow channel is full and your meter beeps or counts down. Your results should match the range on your test strip vial. If you get repeated abnormal results, stop using the meter and test strips and contact the glucometer manufacturer for further assistance. For storage, keep your glucometer and your supplies in its carrying case in a cool and dry location. Do not refrigerate your glucometer kit. 
clean your glucometer and lancing device, use a dampened cloth with mild soap and water. You should not immerse the glucometer or lancing device in any liquid. If you run out of supplies, make sure you only buy compatible test strips and lancets for your glucometer. This concludes this presentation on the basic use and care of a glucometer. If you have any questions, please contact your healthcare provider.